is nailed through the prayer to Jesus divine word. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus divine word made flesh. From the beginning he already were. Before even time began, you're the Son and with the Father and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. But in the fullness of time, you who created man became your man yourself. Through God and the Holy Spirit and Mary, you became Jesus, divine word made flesh. You came to our world to save us and to show us how to live and love here, so that may we live and love hereafter. Dear Jesus, divine word incarnate, please teach us to follow you. May our love for you always be made flesh, not ever lost in word or song. In prayer, we come face to face with you, like you with the Father and the Holy Spirit. In love and service, may we likewise come face to face with our sisters and brothers, the least of them most of all. For as we treat each other, so do we treat you. In your name, we pray now, always and in always. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan of Jesus Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Tuesday, the 14th week in Ordinary Time. St. Anthony, our Mass presider today is Reverend Father Louis Punzalan, SVD. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to Christ the King will now begin. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our gospel reading for today is a miracle of healing. Our Lord heals a demoniac who could not speak, and this demoniac was brought to Jesus he was able to drive the demon out, and the man is again able to speak. At the end of the Gospel, the Lord's heart is filled with pity. He was troubled, he was moved with pity for the people, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. That is why the Lord said, the harvest is great, the workers are few. Ask the master of the harvest to send out workers to do the harvesting. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, They made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria, my wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel? The work of an artisan, no God at all. Destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stalk of grain that forms no ear can yield no flour. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as the strangers. Though they offer sacrifice, immolate flesh, and eat it, the Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have mouths that speak not. They have eyes but see not. They have ears but hear not. They have noses but smell not. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone that trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Please stand to honor the gospel. with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel 
according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. When the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned. They were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Ask the master of the harvest to send out workers for the harvesting. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is like a typical day. It is a typical day in the life of Jesus. Teaching in the synagogue, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, curing every disease and illness. This is practically the daily schedule of the Lord. It is almost always a full daily schedule. The Gospels portray Jesus either as teaching or feeding or healing. He was teaching, he was feeding, and he was healing. My dear friends, we come today to the end of the section, chapters 8 and 9 of the Gospel of Matthew, recounting the ten miracles of Jesus. The last single miracle described is that of a man whose deafness arises from his being possessed by a demon. In today's Gospel reading, a man is brought to Jesus by the people. Our Lord drives out the demon. The man immediately is able to speak. But there is a double reaction on the part of those who witness the miracles. The miracle. One group of people said, Oh, wow, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. It is amazing that this man, Jesus, could make a mute person speak. The implications of the divine origins of Jesus are very clear in the Gospel. But another group, the Pharisees, said, Oh, it is through the prince of demons, through the prince of devils, that this man, Jesus, cast out devils to different reactions from two sets of people. My dear brothers and sisters, stories of blindness, stories of deafness, stories of dumbness in the gospel always have a deeper meaning. Far more serious than physical blindness or physical dumbness or physical deafness are being spiritually blind, spiritually deaf, and spiritually dumb. The Pharisees in the Gospel represent such people and we see it happening in the story. They are blind because they cannot see or they refuse to see God at work in Jesus. They are deaf because 
they do not hear or do not want to understand what Jesus says. And the Pharisees are also dumb because they cannot speak the words of life that Jesus gives them. The very same thing can happen to each one of us. That is why today, let us pray to be more able to see clearly, to understand what God says, and to be able to share what God gives us to other people. Today's Gospel also tells us another part of the schedule of Jesus. Behind all that He does is the deep compassion of the Lord for the needs of people. The Lord sees them harassed and dejected. The Lord sees them wandering and aimless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And this is a familiar image in the Old Testament, the sheep and the shepherd. Then looking at the disciples, the Lord says, The harvest is great, the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to His harvest. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, our Lord cannot do all, everything on His own. As a matter of fact, Jesus will hardly step outside the boundaries of Palestine. Jesus did not go to foreign lands. He needs helpers. He needs shepherds. He needs assistance. People who will help Him cure the sick, proclaim the gospel, and announce the good news. That is why, at this point, I'd like to share a more personal note about us here at Christ the King. The harvest is great. The workers are few. We thank divine providence. We thank the prayers of our founder and father, Saint Arnold Johnson because he continues to send vocations to the SVD in the Philippines. I am not authorized to announce the number of new seminarians, but the number is very encouraging. And we can only say, thank you, Lord, for sending young men to us wanting to be priests and missionaries someday. When I am already given the authority to announce how many new seminarians we will have, I will announce it in public. But in the meantime, I will keep my mouth shut. But the number is very encouraging. That is why, please don't get tired. If I keep on asking for help and assistance for our seminarians, once we know the number and once we are, around, we are authorized to announce the number, I will again knock on the doors of people's hearts to request an appeal for this, to request an appeal for that. We need your support. We need your prayers for the perseverance of these young boys, of these young men. And we need your financial assistance because they will need it for board and lodging and for, for tuition. In any case, we continue to thank the Lord for sending vocations to us in SVD Philippines. According to our former Superior General Heinz Kuluke, SVD, a German SVD assigned in Cebu when he was still Superior General of the SVD, he said, the SVD is the fastest growing male 
religious missionary congregation in the world. We continue to thank God as we also thank our many friends, our supporters, our benefactors, our donors, and our sponsors. Amen. Through the priesthood of the new covenant, God brings the reconciling ministry of His Son to us. Let us approach the Lord of the harvest as we pray, Lord, send out laborers to your harvest. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest, that more men may be called to serve God's people as priests, we pray. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest, that nations close to the gospel may be prepared and become fertile fields for the sowing of God's word, we pray. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest, that those who work as priests, nuns, religious brothers, catechists, and lay apostles may inspire others to join them, we pray. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest. That we may encourage and work with those who serve in special ministries in our community, we pray. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest. That the reconciling sacrifice of Christ may bring the dead to glory, we pray. Lord, send out laborers to your harvest. And we pray for our other intentions. We pray, Lord, Lord send, send out, out laborers, laborers to your, to your harvest. harvest. Lord of the harvest, through our humble prayers, gather together your people. We thank you for sending young men to the SVD, especially in the Philippines. Grant us more workers in your mission. Hasten the coming of the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Spirit in Christ, here we this field. You are the wind that breaks through the fields. Gather the wheat and form us in Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Accountable holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, he gave you thanks, gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in my memory. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread all over the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop. Remember your servants, Darlene Madlambayan, Art Bilamide, Rogelio Tam, Betty Tam, Robert Edwin Tam, Rogelio Tam III, Ardi de los Santos, Pedrito Palaganas, Honor Santos, Filomena and Jose Javier, Aurea and Boy Loma, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like His may also be one with Him in His resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, all the saints, especially Saint Elizabeth of Hungary and Saint Anthony Zachariah, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue to pray for more worthy vocations to the priesthood and to the religious missionary life. And let us also pray for those who are supporting and helping our students, our seminarians in their studies and formation. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. You said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Greet each other with a sign of peace. harvest is great. The workers are few. My dear brothers and sisters, this is Jesus, the Lord of the harvest, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. Happy are those invited to receive Him. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the Lord. word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you unto my soul. Since I cannot this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're ready there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sanctification, body of Christ. 
salvation, blood of Christ, fill all my veins. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, he may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for vocations. O Father, you desire all of us to be happy. Stir up the grace of religious vocation in the hearts of many men and women. Grant to them the willingness and generosity to give themselves and their lives, their time and their talents to the service of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, and to His Holy Church. Many more men and women go forth as priests, deacons, brothers and sisters, to bring the truth of our Catholic faith to all others so that soon they too may know you better and love you more and serving you be truly happy. Amen. Oracio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins. We humbly come to you to find forgiveness in life. We come to you in our needs to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has deserved and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love by your healing hand. Dispel the fear and the sick and the dead. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease, to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use this medicine developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with confidence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body. Strengthen their in commitments and protection from their disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Luis, San Pedro Calunzod, pray for us. Saint Arnold Johnson and Joseph Hedadines, pray for us. Be seated Please for be seated. And now, mga po, sa inyong lahat, Again, as usual, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our friends and benefactors and supporters of our seminarians and for our seminarians. We'd like to mention their generosity, their kindness, their prayers, everything that they do for us, especially for the young, young boys who are pursuing their vocation to the priesthood and the religious missionary life. The gentleman who served me today on my left, on your right, but on my left, is a seminarian who, who just completed his degree in philosophy last May. He is here because together with six other classmates, there are seven of them, they will be proceeding to Tagaytay to start their postulancy. They will proceed to Tagaytay to start their postulancy. And again, the harvest is great. We thank the Lord of the harvest that He continues to send future workers to do the harvesting. So this guy is from San Isidro Abra and he will be joining his six other classmates who are expected to come anytime today until tomorrow, until the 7th. And uh, very soon they will go to Tagaytay for the postulancy. One year postulancy in Tagaytay. And then one year novitiate in Calapan in Oriental Mindoro and then go back to Tagaytay for four years of theology and one or two years of practical regency. The journey is long but we will keep on praying for them and we wish them the best as they formally begin their training and formation for the religious missionary life in the SVD through the postulancy. I also like to thank the following persons and friends who have been very supportive and very helpful. The hospitality and the kindness of a couple from Lawag whom uh, I met a few days ago and I was in Lawag to visit an SVD classmate and uh, I met them personally, si Dr. Roby and Dr. Grace Andres, a couple, a kind and beautiful couple in in Lawag. Dr. Andres, maraming marami pong salamat. Coni Padua, thank you so very much too. Rudy Velasco, Hill Madlambayan in the States, salamat. Hill, Ivan Janel, Jennifer uh, Chua, Jennifer Palaganas, Maria Cristina Santos, Maricel Bautista, Maria Loreto Bermejo, Alan Millar, Tanya Marina Poles, Mark Rady Makasait, Samuel Estor, Raymond Mislang, and also um, the Javier family for your kindness to our seminarians and for sending your valuable help to them. Uh, pardon me if I have to read some more names, but we need to thank them too. Bernadette Lim, Analita Nartates, Cecilia Brabio, Annalyn Cagadas, June and Malu Villasilio, Elena Kalman, Erlinda Pareja, Edwin Rapisora, Maria Lucita Alonso, Anne Marie San Andres, Joan Sandueta, Joan Get Well Soon, we prayed for you in the Mass, Milagro Salandoni, Maristela Fendino, Clarissa de la Riarte, uh, Janeth Calamba, Loresa Santillan, Teresa Espenilia, Almi Mehoy, Margie Maristela, Kathleen Pagsulingan, Carla Bustamante, Joey Cain, Jennifer Domingo, Felizardo Hamero Jr., Patricio Gonzaga, Zara Larano, Eliza Antonio, 
Maria Angeles de Guzman to all of you. Maraming marami pong salamat. Also, Rizel Salveron, Patricia Marie Juda, Richelle Mendoza, Rose Vidalion, Imelda Nagoy, Michael and Freni May Ordona, and Teresita Palma. To all of you, may God send you more blessings of peace, good health, and faith. And I'd like to continue appealing for support for our seminarians. In front of you on your screen is the, are the bank details for the seminarians. Banco de Oro, Divine Word Mission Seminary, Inc., 000-220-191247. We will appreciate your help, your support, your prayers for our seminaries. As I've said, many are entering, aside from the old ones who are returning, many more are entering this August 5. They are arriving in August. And uh, if you want to communicate and ask some more uh, questions to me, you can address your email to the email address indicated ckmsdonorcare at gmail.com. And we are also keeping two GCash numbers that are in front of you on the screen. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. Walang katapusang pasasalamat at patuloy na panawagan sa inyong lahat. God bless all of you. Let us all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Christ the King. Jesus Christ is King of Kings. Come, let us adore Him. In the deepest reverence, we approach the glorious throne of our risen Lord and King, Jesus Christ, and offer Him tribute of our homage and adoration. We adore and praise Him to whom the Eternal Father said, Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor before the day star. Like the dew, I have begotten you. Lord Jesus, not only do we implore you for your mercy, we earnest beg you to reign over us. Your interests may be our own. Fulfill in our time the promise you made to Saint Margaret Mary. Hasten and establish the universal reign of your sacred heart. Triumphed by the reign of your sacred heart, O Jesus, before Satan succeeds in corrupting every state of life and leading people far from you and from their eternal salvation. Triumph and reign for your sacred heart and gain the victory of your love in every home. Reign there by your spirit of peace, promised to all joyful receive you into their hearts. 
triumph by the reign of your sacred heart, and do not delay, dear Lord, for many homes are suffering bitter evils which you alone can heal. Triumph by the reign of your sacred heart, grant to priests and religious that by the word and example they draw all people to you, to love and serve you faithfully. Triumph by the reign of your sacred heart, Enlighten the youth of today, that they grasp the beauty of a clean life, the strength of solid virtue, and the attractiveness of mercy and love, as demonstrated by your own life of selfless service to others. Triumph by the reign of your sacred heart. Conquer them by your gospel message, so that they idol is none other than you, our sacred heart of Jesus. Give them a tender love of your Virgin Mother so that they learn from her the secrets of that heart that has so loved people. Amen. In the silence of our heart, let us present our needs and petition to the merciful heart of Christ the King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever, ever shall, shall be. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 